Hello and welcome to Stories from India. This is a podcast where we talk about myths, legends and folk tales from India. I am your host Narad Muni and I'm a mythological character myself. I have the gift of eternal life and knowledge of the past, the present and the future. By profession, I'm a traveling musician and a storyteller. So the way I'm doing my job is by podcast. In this episode, we are covering a Manipuri folk tale. Manipur is a state on the eastern side of India. We haven't really done any folk tales from this state before. This is an interesting story. that is unique to this area and so here we are there was a cuckoo she wasn't cuckoo at least not cuckoo as in mentally unstable but let's name her cuckoo she was just returning from a long way off she had been to africa what was she doing in africa you say What does a bird do? Migrate down south for the winter? That might have been the explanation if Manipur was in a cold enough place that birds might be compelled to migrate to a warmer climate. But Manipur is temperate. So let's just pretend that the cuckoo had gone there on vacation. It had been an amazing holiday, she thought. as she dropped her bags on the front porch of her bird house she turned off her home security system and collected the mail and entered she needed a vacation to recover from this vacation the trip had been extremely tiring this wasn't the kind of airlines that provide comfortable lie flat seats and serve champagne and let you watch movies while your heavy luggage was kept in the belly of the plane quite the contrary instead you had to fly by yourself flapping your arms carrying your bags without any in-flight meal service although she did manage to find some worms on the maldives along the way when she stopped to rest her wings When she got home there was a surprise waiting for her It was a five crib bed a do it yourself kit from IKEA Perfect Now she could lay eggs She just had to assemble the crib which would probably take a few days And that wasn't the only thing on her to do list It was a long list. When she unrolled it, it went tumbling out of her home and out of sight. Not unlike what I'm sure you've seen in some animated movies. First order of business was to assemble the five cribs, to lay some eggs, build the children's rooms, decorate the rooms, go hunt for worms for breakfast, lunch and dinner. weave baskets weave cloth from cotton make clothes go maintain the farm sow the seeds set up an irrigation system harvest the crops when they grew and so on and so forth it was a pretty long list and no one could dispute that she was going to be busy a long time she got right down to it because this cuckoo was a very hard working one she had assembled the furniture and laid eggs and was now weaving beautiful and cozy blankets for the eggs the cuckoo heard the doorbell ring and seeing from her nest app that it was in fact her neighbor the sparrow she opened the door the sparrow had come to invite the cuckoo to a block party 
it was a welcome back party specially arranged for the cuckoo they all missed her and now that she was back they had arranged a party for her the cuckoo should have been surprised she was never much of a person to make friends or to have conversations with nosy neighbors but she knew why they had invited her out of goodwill she perceived a long founded belief amongst all of the creatures here was that the cuckoo would quickly be followed by the monsoon and the rains for those of you who don't know there are two primary seasons in a large part of india it's either wet and cool or hot and dry the monsoon is a change in the weather from one to the other and with it comes rainfall this was something that all the creatures in the cuckoo's village had been desperately waiting for her neighbors wanted to have the party to thank her for the upcoming rainfall that was sure to follow but the cuckoo had no interest in parties she was very transactional she had come back hadn't she and that meant the rain would follow why did she have to go to this silly party of theirs she had much more important things to do yeah her to do list she declined and advised her neighbor to carry on with the party but to keep the music down low because her eggs were sleeping loud music might cause enough vibrations for her eggs to hatch prematurely the sparrow was disappointed she told the cuckoo that it may have been borderline unacceptable for her to skip the block party but it would be unthinkable for her not to come to the big meeting next week she must come at all costs unthinkable huh the cuckoo challenged too late it's no longer unthinkable you've already thought of it but she reassured the sparrow that she would be there for their town hall if the cuckoo was busy that day she was twice as busy the next week because her eggs had hatched by then and that meant so much more extra work each of her chicks was constantly crying for food so the cuckoo had to go look for one worm after another it was taking a long time but she kept finding the little worms sometimes she had to fight to overpower them before carrying them off in her beak and dropping them into one of her hungry chicks's open mouth but she had set enough reminders on her smart devices that she did not forget the big meeting she got there a little bit late just as the president was speaking the president of the council was a man and he was addressing all the members of the village he concluded his speech by saying and that is why this big meeting is called a town hall even though we are a village we will continue to refer to this meeting as the village town hall irrespective of the apparent contradiction in the implied scale of our settlement somewhere in the audience someone snored before gasping awake when a neighbor poked them in the ribs the president continued welcome back cuckoo i see you have joined us now we can move on to more important matters including matters that concern you in particular all eyes turned to glare at the cuckoo but she seemed to not care her mind was presently occupied by whether the rectangular pattern 
was the right pattern to weave on her next blanket? Or should she weave circles? The monkey, who was the secretary to the president, began to read out the next item on the agenda. Next item, a question from a concerned villager. We should discuss why it is that in this village, we only have one adult representative of each species in this town hall. Why aren't there two humans or three monkeys or four cows, for example? The president let out a nervous chuckle. Not that one, monkey. Let's address that in due course. Let's move on to the item about the big day tomorrow. The cuckoo was nodding her head the way other creatures were, but she was not really paying attention. Her mind was firmly on her household duties. She must remember to spray some pesticide in her farm. Wait a minute. What if she just ate those bugs instead of spraying them with pesticide? She could teach her children to eat those bugs. That would make her work easier. So she could finally work on that kitchen remodeling that she had been putting off for so long. The big day tomorrow, the president repeated, for emphasis. It's the day we all go out and work on cleaning our river. Now that Cuckoo is back, monsoon rains will soon follow. But our river is full of dirt and sediment and all kinds of waste. We need to remove the weeds growing on the river bed. And we must all work together. Because this river is not my river. It's not your river. It's our river. Cheers from the audience. That reminded the cuckoo. She had to get the hockey equipment for her children to practice hockey ahead of their little league match in two weeks. At this point, the president and every creature in the hall turned their eyes to the cuckoo. Well, I mean, every creature except the cuckoo herself. She couldn't turn her eyes on herself, could she? Every creature looked at the cuckoo and the president asked the question. You are coming to help, aren't you, cuckoo? But I have so much work to do. I have to remove weeds from the garden. I have to finish weaving raincoats for my children before it gets all wet. Yeah, you work hard. We get it, the president said. But look, we all do hard work here. The monkey has to collect fruits for me. The elephant has to move logs so she can build my new home. The rooster has to practice his crowing so he can wake me up in the morning. The cat has to... Well, I don't know what the cat has to do. But I'm sure it's very important. You do realize you're not helping your case, right? The cuckoo said. I easily do all of that and more in a single day, she started to say. But the president and all the other creatures wouldn't listen. Finally, she relented. Oh, fine. I'll be there and I'll help you clean the riverbed. She grumbled. Cheers went up in the audience a second time. All the creatures retired to their homes after that. They knew they had a long day ahead. And the weather forecast was perfect. Well, not perfect for relaxation, but it was perfect for the job they wanted to do. It was sweltering. The temperature was probably in the high 40s, degree centigrade, not Fahrenheit. All the animals showed up, including the cat, the tiger, 
the deer, the elephant, the mouse and every creature that was part of the village. Except the cuckoo. All day, all of those creatures, predators and prey, worked side by side and toiled and removed the weeds and cleared the dirt from the river. The president himself worked as well. He was one of the few creatures with opposable thumbs. And so, he was better positioned than the rest to use shovels and rakes. All day they worked hard, until finally, in the evening, they looked back and realized that they had done a pretty decent job. They were rather proud of themselves. When the monsoon rains would come, they would fill this river with clean water, and the water would stay clean, at least for a while. They all retired to their homes that night. Sure enough, the very next day, rain arrived. And it wasn't just a drizzle, it was a downpour. All the creatures danced around in the rain, enjoying it, thanking the gods. Gardens looked lush green, and the river looked clear. The creatures were thrilled. When the rain subsided a little, they all made their way to the river and everyone began drinking. The clean river water had never tasted better. It was their own sweat that had made this river tasty. And I don't mean that literally, of course. Just then, who should appear on the scene but the cuckoo? with her five little children and a couple of buckets that she seemed ready to fill up. Her appearance brought a sudden change in the crowd. Before she arrived, everyone was excitedly chattering. But when they saw her appear, there was a silence. So sudden, it was almost deafening. The president walked up. It was his job, as their leader, to handle awkward situations. What do you think, friends? He addressed everyone. The cuckoo did not help us out when we cleaned the river. Should we allow her to drink this clean river water? The answer, it seemed, was a resounding no. I guess animals hold a grudge for a while. And no amount of doe-eyed looks from the cuckoo chicks made them change their mind. The president proclaimed that the cuckoo was only entitled to drink water directly from the sky. The president said that because she brought the monsoon rains with her, he didn't think she would go thirsty very much. Bad scientific basis there. But that's the story. Honestly though, I feel for the cuckoo. She did pretty hard work. More than all of the other animals. But at the same time, she backed out of her promise once she had committed to helping them. She should either have stood her ground if she felt strongly about it, or... She should at least have communicated that she wasn't going to be able to help. So yeah, that's why the cuckoo drinks only rainwater. At least, she's not too restricted. She can always fly somewhere else to drink water, right? What if she went downstream and drank from the river? Who would know? Specifically, the cuckoo in today's story is the pied cuckoo, which means she was covered in feathers of two different colors. Check out a couple of links on the site sfipodcast.com to see what she looks like. That's where we'll end it this week. In the next episode, we'll do a story about the goddess Kali and we'll see a very gory battle. 
If you have comments or suggestions, or if there are particular stories you would like to hear, please do let me know by leaving a comment or a review on the site sfipodcast.com or tweet at sfipodcast. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. Be sure to subscribe to the show to get notified automatically of new episodes. A big thank you to each and every one of you for your continued support and your feedback. The music is from purpleplanet.com. That's purple-planet.com. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time. <laughs>